and our crew's approaching the dock. And it's another nice day down here at Boynton. Our guy appears to have a pretty good line. And we've got the wife at the ready. Some lines set to go. Let's see how this one plays out. And they had a good line at the start. Somehow they're off a little bit now. And they're pushing. Oh, oh. He's pumped the brakes. Not good. Look out behind you. Oh, <laughs> we're going to hit somebody right away. Oh, not uncommon, unfortunately, down here at Boynton. Welcome back, guys, to the greatest show on earth, and that is the Miami Boat Ramps channel. I'm your host, Broncos Guru, in collaboration with our boy, Wavy Boats, and it's another Wavy Guru Productions back at the ramp. And as we mentioned earlier, today we're visiting Boynton. Our crew's going to do their best to try and get this one back over to the dock. This is a difficult spot, though, when you're trying to back up into this again. The current's already kind of pushing them off a little bit. They'll probably have to reset this up, but it looks like he's going to get a good angle right here. And they're coming a little tight on the dock. See if he can get a little push off on the front. And Cap's left the helm and grabbing, but that's going to be good enough to get him on, and that'll get him out of here. So I kind of noticed this when our last crew was approaching the dock, that the prop is spinning on the boat next to him. At first when I saw it, I thought maybe it was the current, but I've never seen that happen before. They've got to have this motor on, out of the water, and that's not a good idea if that's the case because they're burning this motor up right now. It has to be. I can't, I can't imagine anything else. I don't see... It, the motor's got to be on. I mean, that prop is absolutely spinning. And somebody's just trimmed the motor up and forgot to turn it off. Okay, now, if I, you look closely, you can see smoke just above the prop. This motor is on. And it's not getting any water to the cooling system right now. That's why we're seeing the smoke there, and that is not good. They're either going to get a overheat alarm going off here shortly or this thing's going to start smoking really bad and that's not going to be good when that happens probably either but they're just taking their time loading it nobody's really noticed i mean i mean i guess it's a little loud down here there's several motors going so maybe you could miss the motor not going i'm guessing the guy who's driving the truck trying to winch this boat on i'm assuming it's his boat and that's why it's not being noticed is because the other guys that are with them probably it's just not something they would pay attention to but this is going to end bad if they leave it like this. And, oh, there we go. Now it's really smoking. Somebody's got to notice it now. They're going to smell it at least. Something's got to, it's got to have a burning smell with it too. And yep, somebody's paying attention here. They're smelling the burning. <laughs> and it's smoking pretty bad now. These guys are still kind of looking like, I'm not sure what's going on. Light bulb, there we go. Somebody's like, oh man, the motor's on. I'm not sure. You guys let me know in the comments below what the proper etiquette would be in this situation at this point. Were they better off to turn that motor off? Or were they better off to drop it in the water and get some cooling running through it? Personally, me, that's probably what I would have done. I may have left the motor going, but put the motor back into the water, but I don't know. They could have burnt the impeller out or any number of things by now already with the way it was smoking. And, yeah, now they're telling Cap. So, the guy up front was the guy whose boat it was, and it looks like they're telling him now that, hey, bro, the motor was running. So they're restarting it, checking it. I mean, it restarted. And I'm still wondering if this is not the proper method. Once again, let me know in the comments below. I'm really not sure if right here you would want to keep this running and get cooling going through the system and get the motor cooled down or just let it cool down by air from being turned off. It just seems like it would happen faster running with the water, but I could be wrong. Well, I absolutely recognize this guy. Here in the jet ski, my man has been on this channel before, and he struggled the last time he was getting the ski off his vehicle. And it looks like he's having similar struggles this time. 
It took him almost five minutes the last time, I think, that we featured him on here to get the ski off. He just had a heck of a time doing it. But that was like on a Wednesday, because it was slow down here. This is a Saturday, <laughs> which is busy. So he tried pushing it off a little bit, didn't really get very far with that. He started the ski and looks like he's gonna try and power it off now. <laughs> and here we go. A little pump action trying to get it off. And if I remember correctly, the saying for this one is, this is how baby jet skis are made. I'm not 100% sure, but he's struggling here again to get this thing off. Now, I didn't see any straps or anything attached to it when he was trying to pull it off, so I don't think that's the issue. I just don't think he's got it deep enough or he didn't push it far enough off the trailer. But, I mean, these things usually are pretty easy to get off. It just takes a little nudge, and once you get that stern floating a little bit, it should pull off. I mean, oh, there we go. He's rocking it. He finally broke it free. And he's going to get this thing pulled over to the dock. And uh, good job this time, man. Not quite five minutes this one. Ah, the joys of being the new family boater. This crew looks a little green based on the way they backed everything down, but I also noticed a few issues going on when they backed it down. Let's see how long it takes them to figure it out, though. But our guy's trying to back this off the trailer and not getting anywhere, and there's a reason, and that's because they didn't remove the transom straps. Kind of taking a look like, hey, what's going on here? And that's the look of he just figured it out, I think. Yep, he's going to double check, but they definitely didn't. The transom straps are still on. And it, there really is nothing wrong with this. I mean, well, there's obviously something wrong with it, but we all do it at some point. I'll never forget the first time I did it, even. And the first time I did it, I was unloading a trailer and wondering why my trailer was floating. And then all of a sudden, couldn't get the vessel off the trailer and really quickly learned like okay yeah I forgot the transom straps that's why the trailer's floating and why I can't get the boat off you boat long enough everybody's gonna do it but it's still frustrating when it happens especially if you've got the whole family down here and the crew ready to roll like here but our guy's gonna have to pull this one back out and reset it up Crew's got it out, and I guess we're gonna redo this. We're gonna come undo the transom straps, and we'll try and continue the process of getting this boat off the trailer. So we removed the straps, we're re-backing it down. We've still got Wifey on the lines. And we've got a couple kids in the boat. So this time we're gonna get a good float. But Wifey's only got a stern line. And, oh, the kids figure that out. They're trying to get a line to mom, and that line's not going. And, of course, the bow's drifting off the dock. Now we're going to make a toss, and we might be a little late. Somebody be, may be walking the line up. <laughs> and here we go, another toss. That one was pretty close. And, yeah, somebody's going to have to walk this one up. All YP needs to really do is bring that stern in, and she can kind of walk the boat up from there. And it looks like she's trying to work on that one now. But I'm assuming they just don't have long enough lines in the bow to be able to get over to the dock. They probably have 20-foot lines. It's a 24-foot boat. But it looks like she's figured it out. They're going to get it pushed up, and they'll be able to get this one set to go and be able to get out of here. And speaking of getting out of here, we're going to get out of here as well. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Miami Boat Ramps. If you did, please check out our other content. We have Wavy Boats, who does a bunch of great things down at Holliver Inlet. My channel, Broncos Guru, we do some great comedy boating videos over there as well. And of course, we've got Boats vs. Hallover, where man and machine take on Mother Nature down at Hallover Inlet in Miami, Florida. And if you guys haven't already, go ahead and drop an anchor on the subscribe button here.